Americans have come to learn that the Minister for Public Safety has a complicated relationship with the truth, and they're taking notice. He said law enforcement asked him to trigger the Emergencies Act, but that's not true. He backdated documents to mislead a federal judge, but he dated it April 31st, and he was found out. He said the Liberal gun grab didn't target law-abiding gun owners, but that's also not true. He said that CSIS didn't share intelligence that Canadian lawmakers were being targeted by foreign dictatorships. That's also not true. And he said that his government had shut down the Beijing-run police stations here in Canada. Guess what? Not true. Canadians have come to learn that they just can't believe him. So when he said he didn't know that notorious serial killer and rapist Paul Bernardo was being transferred to less restrictive conditions and to medium security, the truth got in the way again. We know the minister was informed. We know the prime minister was informed. The minister needs to do what's right. He needs to be responsible and accountable. He needs to resign today. Fiasco with this government. The level of disorganization and negligence from Liberal ministers is often appalling. After the public security minister has failed to be informed of the transfer of one of the most brutal criminals in Canadian history, we now know that the Prime Minister's office was informed three months ago. They could have used that time to ensure the victims' families were warned. How does this keep happening on such serious files? Why are they showing such clear incompetence? When will they fix this? Mr. is so upset. Why won't he stand up and answer this question and talk to the victims' families? If they care so much, then do it. I've said this before. The buck stops with the minister. Stop the blame game. This is people's lives. You are in the government. The prime minister, there's no one below that. Again, there is duty here. Either fire the, the public safety minister or resign. That's it. Those are the options. Speaker, does this Minister of Public Safety expect us to believe that for three months his office withheld information from him about the most notorious murderer and serial rapist in Canada, that he had been transferred to a medium security prison? It's clear the minister likely knew about the transfer in March and did nothing. The entire government likely knew and did nothing about it including the Prime Minister's office. When will the Prime Minister finally admit that he has lost total control of his cabinet and ask this minister to resign? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, I want to begin by taking a moment uh, to express my support for the families of Leslie Mahaffey and Kristen French, who have no doubt been traumatized time and time again uh, by the decision that was taken under Correctional Services Canada. That's why when I found out on May 30th, I took immediate action to reach out to the Commissioner to express those concerns. And I want to work with all members to make sure that this doesn't happen again. The directions that I have put into motion will ensure that I'm directly briefed and, most importantly, that victims are given advance notice before these decisions are taken in the future. Thank you very much. The Honourable Member for Haldeman, Norfolk. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is in town, so why won't he stand and answer these questions? The Minister has misled Canadians before. He has said at least 11 times that law enforcement requested the Emergencies Act. That was false. He said that Bill C-21 wasn't going to ban guns used by hunters and farmers. That was false. He said that Chinese police stations in Canada had been shut down. That was false. Canadians have lost confidence in this minister. So will he do the honourable thing and just resign? Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is in Ottawa, but it's interesting because he's not here to answer questions. On the Bernardo case, last week, the Minister of Public Safety feigned surprise about the criminal's transfer from a maximum security prison to a medium security facility. But he had known about it for three months, Mr. Speaker. In fact, even the Prime Minister's office knew about it. No one did anything. This is liberal incompetence at its finest. When will the minister resign, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, he knew that this dangerous criminal would benefit from a less severe prison. He must also have known that this decision would outrage and worry the victim's families. The Minister of Public Safety does not have a very good track record, what with dubious decisions, backtracking, and statements that are not tr the truth. 
So if this government has a leader who sees things clearly and is leading in the best interests of Canadians and victims, let him stand up and throw this minister out. The Honourable Member for Avignon, Lemitis Matan, Madapedia. Mr. Speaker, don't ask the Minister of Public Safety about Paul Bernardo's transfer. He doesn't know a thing about it, even though his employees knew. Don't ask the Prime Minister either. He doesn't know a thing about it either, even though his staff knew about it. Just like the Prime Minister didn't know about Beijing's threats against a Conservative politician, even though his employees knew about it. For that matter, don't talk to the Minister of Emergency Preparedness either about the threats. He didn't know a thing about it either, even though his staff knew about it. If you want to talk to someone in the know, talk to an employee. So should employees become ministers? Mr. Speaker, at this point, it's a pattern. Ministers are constantly telling us that they're not aware of briefing notes that the senior civil service confirms were sent directly to those ministers' staff. Mr. Speaker, we can take them at their word that their staff did not see fit to inform them once, maybe twice. But there comes a point where it's the political equivalent of saying, my dog ate my homework. And these ministers are losing their homework quite often. So when are we going to see some real accountability from them? Because we're starting to worry about the health of the dogs eating all that homework. Mr. Speaker, just because we're laughing doesn't mean it's funny. Ministers have a responsibility to inform themselves and then inform their constituents. Just this spring, in fact, if we had relied on the word of ministers rather than on the reports in the media, three members of this House would still be facing threats from China without knowing it. Diplomat Zhao Wei would still be in office. Ten or so constituencies would still be subject to Chinese interference. This is what would have happened without the media if we had relied on ministerial accountability. When will they assume their ministerial responsibilities? Mr. Speaker, the Liberal government put convicted murderer, kidnapper and child rapist Paul Bernardo into a medium security prison. Meanwhile, if the PM is in Ottawa, why won't he stand up and answer the beloved questions? Exactly. In 2013, the Conservative government took responsibility when we were faced with exactly the same issue. Paul Bernardo was to be transferred to medium security prison and the Conservative government of the day said no. The public safety minister, including the prime minister himself, have said yes. So, Mr. Speaker, will the minister resign for granting leniency to the most notorious child murderer? The Honourable... The prime minister's office, the prime minister knew about this for three months. He has a litany of highly paid staff to tell him about these things. It's preposterous to think that he didn't. His public itinerary today says that he's in the National Capital Region. How come he hasn't informed this House of the Public Safety Minister's resignation? Yeah. Here is to consult. And it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be a leap of logic to understand that re-victimizing families by these seri of these serial rapists by allowing their transfers out of maximum security prison is something that the government should have worked to avoid, like they failed with with the Terry Lynn McClintock case. This public safety minister, and I mean, you see, if, the, if, the, if, if the member looks behind in his, in his caucus, he'll see his caucus cringing. He has the worst record of failure in this government, outside of the prime minister. How come the prime minister, who's in the national capital region today, has not informed this? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, uh, I think we should choose what we talk about. If we want to talk about uh, the circumstances that are involved in these horrific crimes and how we can responsibly deal with a correction system that's one of the best and most envied in the world. Sorry, I'm going to have to stop that, uh, the Honourable Minister. The Honourable, the Honourable uh, Government House Leader from the top, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. When we talk about these issues, I would suggest that they require enormous sensitivity. And I am concerned that in every question uh, that, they're, that they're peppering it with uh, partisan commentary uh, and trying to extract political advantage from the situation, Mr. Speaker. I have attempted, as I've talked about this, to talk about the responsibility. We have one of the greatest correctional services systems in the world. It is mired all over the world, and one of its principal tenets is to not interfere with it politically. And so we all rightfully feel outrage about this transfer. We have great emotion about the crimes that occurred, but we need to deal with that emotion responsibly, Mr. Speaker, and make... You know, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister and his Cabinet have never, absolutely never taken responsibility for their many acts of bad faith. For example, as Minister for Public Safety alone has misled this House no fewer than seven times. 
He even misled a judge by backdating documents. That alone should have led to his dismissal, but he's still with us today. The Liberals have also never shown any sensitivity for the victims of Paul Bernardo. The Prime Minister is in Ottawa. Can he finally tell us that he will dis dismiss the Minister for Public Safety? Mr. Speaker, that same indictment also re revealed that in New York City last summer, PRC agents tried to coerce someone in New York City to come to Toronto for more intensive interrogations. The implication is that Beijing is comfortable using Canada as its foreign interference playground. Maybe that's because two months ago, those same PRC agents were arrested. Yet here no north of the border, nothing. No arrests, no new legislation. That's when will the Prime Minister replace this minister with someone who will get the job done? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, we are getting the job done by adding new authorities for our national security establishment, by adding $49 million for the RCMP to protect Canadians from foreign interference, by being on the cusp of introducing new, a new foreign agent registry. I, I, I'm, going to have to, I'm going to have to break for a second. We're starting to see the volume go up again, and it's, we're hearing individual voices. It's, it's just getting a little bit out of hand, so we're going to take a deep breath and pause a bit. And now we'll ask the Honourable Minister to start from the top, please. Mr. Speaker, we are getting the job done by making sure that we equip our national security establishment with the tools that they need to fight foreign interference, with additional resources for the RCMP, which we put into the budget, and by raising the bar on transparency through the creation of NCCOP and NCIRA, and by continuing to engage Canadians on this. That's what we're doing. What Conservatives are doing are continuing on with an agenda that focuses on partisan attacks. They should stop that and do the work with all members in this chamber so that we can fight against foreign interference and protect our democratic institutions. No, no.